The Citizen Science Lab developed out of a small mentorship program that we started on the campus of Duquesne University. Programming for the Citizen Science Lab was developed out of uh, the way that I taught college laboratories when I was a graduate student at Duquesne University. I feel like uh, a lot of our education systems wait until it's too late to introduce laboratories on a regular basis into their science curriculum. And I found that when we get to college, we are all of a sudden slammed with all these laboratories. What I decided to do was to create a place that focused on just the laboratory portion, which I felt made science more interesting and more fun. One of the great things about opening the Citizen Science Lab now and at this time is that as the technology changes for laboratory techniques, it gets faster, it gets quicker, it becomes more efficient. And so that allows us to do experiments with students that tend to be a little bit more complicated. We can do them in hours and days as opposed to weeks and months. This is a very different kind of an education. So we're teaching them or letting them learn how to become people that will learn how to learn for the rest of their lives. I come to the Citizen Science Lab because it is fun and there's a lot of movement and actually doing things. The biggest obstacle I think was finding a funder that was just as passionate and interested in the vision for the Citizen Science Lab as we were. First and foremost, our, our greatest supporters have been the community and the participants that come and get involved in our program. But outside of that, I would say a lot of our funders, such as the Heinz Endowments, the Buell Foundation, the RK Mellon Foundation, the BNY Mellon Foundation, and the Pittsburgh Foundation, as well as McCulley Ministries here in the Hill District, have all been very, very huge supporters of the mission behind the Citizen Science Lab. This, this kind of science is actually what our future is going to rely on. We are currently working on expansion. The second location is going to be in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. It will be significantly larger than our current space. Uh, we right now have one laboratory in the Hill District. The space in the South Hills will have five laboratories. That includes a lab for toddlers, a zoology lab, a tissue culture room, and enough lab space for 50 students at one time. We instruct through doing, and we believe in learning through doing. We don't spend a lot of time doing lecture. When you come in for a two-hour workshop, that one hour and 45 minutes is going to be spent doing the actual experimentation. And that's how we believe our students learn. That's how we believe our students become excited about STEM. That's how we believe our students become passionate about STEM. You can sit and read about you know, DNA all day long, but when you actually manipulate DNA and when you take genes and you put them in new organisms and see these organisms do new things that they couldn't do before with your very own hands, it becomes a lot more exciting. You start out like the first half hour, do just um, presentations, and then the rest is just doing the thing. The Citizen Science Lab has helped me a lot. It introduced me to new things that I'll be learning maybe in college to so get me a head start on everything I wanted to do. A couple ways the Citizen Science Lab changed my life. One way is showing me this Adjum Jamboree. So like now I'm connected with thousands and thousands of different people across the world, from high school students to people with PhDs. It opened the door for me. The Citizen Science Lab did change my life. Before, I didn't like animals a lot. When I met a couple other animals, like the snakes and stuff, I started getting used to it, and then it made me want to be a herpetologist. The next big thing for the Citizen Science Lab is to take over the world. We really want to make sure that this is a national model. We'd like to build it to the point where there is a Citizen Science Lab in every major city across the U.S., and that it becomes the staple and the model for hands-on STEM education. The fact that there are these community labs that actually give children that are not in some way either affiliated with a university or have the resources to do this stuff, that they still get those resources and they're able to do science that they were otherwise not able to do. So that is really cool. We offer a variety of programs. Uh, this includes homeschool workshops for those who homeschool their, uh, their children. We provide field trips for schools and organizations that want to bring their students and get the full experience. And we also do initiatives. These initiatives are usually geared towards getting more minority students involved in the sciences. This includes programs like the Drone Academy, the Sea Perch program, which is an aquatic robotics program. And we also have an iGEM team. An iGEM team is a team of high school students that are trained to become synthetic biologists. 
uh, and they compete in a international competition every year in Boston. It's also important to be able to let students, even when they're very young, undergraduates, even high school students, find a problem that they believe in, that their heart resonates with, that they want to do, and let them try. Citizen Science Lab success is largely due to the wonderful staff that we have here. Uh, we have people that are educated in um, the sciences, but we also have people who have been formally educated um, in schools of education, such as Duquesne University and the University of Pittsburgh. Um, together with those individuals and the community that steps in, professionals in particular fields, such as drone pilots, microbiologists, molecular biologists, they all work together to make the Citizen Science Lab the success that it is.